a labyrinth of plot lines and switching point of views constantly, your head might just explode. Hello, my bookworms, and welcome to today's review on A Dangerous Inheritance by Alison Weir. I hunted for this book for a whole frickin' year, and when I finally got this book, I was so overjoyed and excited to read it and get into it, and, well, I read it and kind of got into it. Kind of. I know it seems like I don't like this book already, and that this is just going to be one of those ranting books, but I didn't really dislike it. I mean, it was good, it just was confusing as all hell. In my review for Book of Souls, I read to you guys this little back panel. It's not that far apart that I should have to reread it for you guys, and if you really want to know about the back panel, go watch Book of Souls review. This review is going to be different, because this book is different. The point of views are between Kate and Catherine. You have Kate, who deals with 80 years before the story of Catherine comes into play, but the book begins with Catherine, and the way the book switches point of views is not normal. This book is separated into four parts, and, well, within those four parts, you would think one part would be Catherine, and the next part would be Kate. That's not how that's not how it works, no. You have like a segment of Kate and then Catherine and then Kate and it's just confusing but at the same time their stories kind of intertwine and it's maddening. I say I'm going to do this review differently because to talk about this book and the sequence that it happens would leave everybody, myself included, in this fit of confusion where you're probably spasming on the floor because your brain just can't contain it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you guys about Kate, I'm going to tell you guys then about Catherine, and then we're going to go into what I liked, what I didn't like, and if I reveal spoilers, I'm sorry because this is probably just going to come out in like some big rumbly spiel. We're going to start with Catherine because that's where the story starts off. Basically, we begin with this letter that Catherine's writing, and it talks about her in the future from where it starts, and it's about after her sister's been beheaded, and that she doesn't understand why because they were only doing what they were told, and, and you know, it, it hooks you. It makes you want to know what is going on and why her sister was beheaded. The story then goes back in time, but we're still in Catherine's time, just earlier in Catherine's life, where she finds out she's going to be married, her sister's going to be married, she, her sister's married to some idiot who's an alcoholic, well, she's going to be married to some cute guy, and she's all excited about it. Her sister's not really the marriage type, she's not really the girly girl type, she's more like, you know, us, readers. Where is Catherine, the girly girl that you kind of want to kick in the face sometimes, because she's just a bubbly idiot? The wedding happens, her sister Jane's not happy about it, Catherine's all excited about it, but she finds out that her and her husband can't consummate the marriage, make it official, if you know what I mean, because, well, his family doesn't want it to happen. Time passes, they're kind of snooping around his house, and she finds these letters that deal with this girl named Kate, and she can't really decipher them because it's really old, like 80 years old. So once she finds the letters, what do her and her hubby do? They go behind the parents' back and they do their naughty business. Finally, they're told that they can make their marriage official, but then, you know, it's told right after, no, you can't because the Queen of England died. When the Queen of England dies, they kind of come to Jane and they're like, you're going to be the next Queen of England and she has to take the throne. She doesn't want the throne, but she takes the throne anyways because her parents are pushing for it, her sister's pushing for it. So she takes the throne, but then this lady who lives in the woods kind of rides in and is like, I'm the real Queen of England. And she kind of overthrows Jane and takes the throne. Jane's held captive in the tower and they don't know what's happening. And then her dad kind of goes off and joins, joins this rebellion and, well, he gets captured and killed. And then, you know, Jane is kind of still locked up in the tower and her sister Catherine and her mother are kind of sitting there like, oh, you know, she was she's just a child, you can't behead her. And then it kind of goes to court, but the court decides that she's going to be beheaded anyway. So her and her husband are beheaded and killed. <sighs> Yeah, if you did not understand that, I am so sorry. <laughs> That's basically the first gist of Catherine. After that, the yeah, forest queen, whoever the hell she was, right, takes Catherine in and her mother and makes them kind of one of her subjects or officials or ladies. I don't know what the hell they are, but they live in the castle. <laughs> so in the castle, Catherine comes across Elizabeth, who's the Scottish girl, who, you know, isn't naturally born in England, so she's not allowed to take over the throne, but she's next in line for the throne, and I'm very confused by this. Just very confused. Catherine's all excited because she thinks that 
yeah, she's going to be the next in line for the queen because she's on the queen's good side and the queen's dying and although she just married a Spanish man, she can't get pregnant and she's all upset about it. Catherine ends up meeting this guy and she's all excited about this guy and she falls in love with this guy. I don't remember his name, so he's just Guy. She falls in love with him and they want to get married, but the queen won't let people get married like the Scottish chick or Catherine because if they get married and they have children, they're going to overthrow the she will be overthrown and just madness. The queen dies, sadly enough. Catherine's all excited because she's like, oh, I'm going to be the queen. And then the people come in and they announce that Elizabeth, the Scottish one, is the next queen, which kind of leaves Catherine like, shit. Basically, Catherine and Elizabeth do not see eye to eye and Catherine's status in the court gets demoted and she's kind of like one of the toilet girls, I think. I'm not exactly sure. Something about toilets. And... Well, she's not happy about it. And the Scottish Queen is like, no, you can't get married because she really wants to marry this guy and she won't let them get married. And then the Scottish one is kind of like toying with her mind and, you know, setting things up. So it looks like the guy she's interested in is actually interested in all of these girls, that she's not special. Catherine's mother then dies and she gets promoted because the Scottish one feels bad for her almost and is talking about adopting her. I don't see how someone can adopt someone who's almost her own age. It's confusing. But she talks about adopting her, but she still forbids her from getting married. So then Catherine's friend, who's the sister of the guy she's in love with, is dying. So her dying wish is to see them married and happy. And they go behind the queen's back, they get married, and have sex, and she gets pregnant. If you guys have seen Mean Girls, you know what happens. You have sex, you get pregnant, you die. Literally. Her husband then gets sent off to France for some mission -y thing that the queen sends him on. So Catherine then finds out she's pregnant. She's begging him to come back. He doesn't receive any of her letters because, you know, they're being intercepted by the queen. And she knows she's pregnant. But she's not doing anything about it yet. No, she's not. She's biding her time. So Catherine starts showing. And then the queen, for some reason, acts all surprised and pissed off and throws her into the tower. Catherine gives birth. And her husband comes back. But they're not allowed to be by each other. But they're held in the same tower. And the guards feel bad for them so they kind of let them sneak around and see each other and seriously you would think they would have learned not to have sex because what do they do they have sex she gets pregnant again and you do not piss off the queen who threw you in the freaking tower to begin with you just you don't but she does so she's pregnant the queen's pissed off she makes Catherine give birth and then she takes the baby away that's how mean she is. Then the Black Plague is happening, and the Queen, to keep Catherine safe, moves her to a safe house out of, the, you know, London or something. No, to Kate! Kate is basically the bastard daughter of King Richard III. When the story starts, he's not the king. He's kind of like the duke or whatever. He is the brother of the king. The king dies, and the king's two sons cannot take on the throne because they're too little, so... Richard is sent to, like, power to take over until they're old enough to take over. Kate gets promoted because, well, she's the king's daughter, although she's the bastard daughter, so she's not legitimate, so she can never take over the throne. But he wants her to have a good life, and he wants to give her a good marriage. So he starts kind of, like, courting around for her. She finds this guy she really wants to marry, and it's her freaking cousin. Yeah, cousin. First cousin. I mean, if it was, like, no, I can't even see, like, third cousin. Yeah, no, no. Thankfully, her dad is like, no, 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 that's not happening. You're not marrying your cousin. You're too closely related. So he doesn't allow it to happen. So she meets this guy whom she says has a ferret face. So furthermore, his name is Ferret Face because I don't remember his real name. Her and Ferret Face are forced to get married. She's not happy about it. And kind of like Catherine, she goes and does the hanky-panky with her cousin. Although, thankfully, she does not get pregnant. But they kind of keep in contact with each other because they both love each other. And I understand that time and age, it's okay to marry your cousin. No, it's not. No, it's not. Basically, then you just kind of deal with the fact that Kate is married to Ferret Face, and they don't really love each other, but, you know, Ferret Face married her because her father paid him off to marry her because no one wants to marry the bastard daughter because she really has nothing to her name. There's basically just a bunch of conspiracies against King Richard because they think that he took the two princes, locked them in the tower, and killed them. There's no proof of it. None whatsoever, but he's never taken the kids out to show, like, the public. It's like, no, they're still alive. When the king is killed in battle, you know, they go into the tower and the kids are nowhere to be seen. So no one really knows what happened to the two princes. You have her cousin who was on the side of King Richard who fought against Ferret Face. No, he didn't. No, that's a lie. Ferret Face was marching into battle, not sure which side he wanted to be on. So he waited for a victor, like a coward he is, Ferret Face. 
So once his the king was killed, he kind of pledged allegiance to the new guy while the cousin was killed and hung and, you know, things like that. Now the best part is, Kate the stupid moron she is sends this letter before the battle to her cousin pledging her love for him and that she will always believe in him and that she, he will always have her heart after Ferret Face already found out that she really loved him and he kind of assumed that they had sexual relations and she said no but then kind of comes out that she did. So the cousin's murdered and Kate's letter is found and they take it to her and she's kind of like in this pickle because she's pregnant and they can't kill a pregnant girl. So she could lie and say no that's forged that I didn't really write that but she doesn't. She stands her ground and she's like I wrote that. I love him. So on and so forth. And you know, it's never really said what happens to her. I mean, I assume she died, but, you know, it's never really said. So that is basically the entire book. On to what I liked and what I didn't like. As you guys can probably already tell, I did not like the constant switching point of views. It could have been done so much better. Because basically, all of this is Kate. And then we just get this little bit here that says Catherine and a date. And that's how it switches point of views constantly. There's no break in between. There's nothing there to let you digest what happened to Kate or what happened to Catherine before it switches into their point of view. I know I said it sometimes intertwines with each other. Like when Kate is writing the letters and Catherine finds them, it's kind of understandable how they intertwine. But apart from that, they really had nothing at all to do with each other. What really did irk me was the back. Yes. Yes. The back panel. It says that Kate, or Catherine, it says Catherine finds these letters in the tower. That's a lie. She does not find the letters in the tower. In her first marriage, while she's roaming the house of her husband's and her parents, she finds these letters in a trunk and she actually keeps them. And, you know, although she doesn't really read into them until she's in the tower, you know, there's nothing there for her to find in the tower because she's stuck in the tower. She can't go anywhere. Another thing I didn't like about this book is how slow it moves sometimes. It is a big book. I mean, not the biggest book I've ever read in my life, but it's quite tiny print considering how, you know, hefty it is. And, you know, it's just, oh, it gave me a headache sometimes with how slow things were moving. And if I had to read one more scene about them promoting their love and just confessing it and like, I would love him, I'm gonna die without him. I was gonna hit myself in the face with the book. I really, really was, I really was. What I did like about this book, however, is the era. I'm really starting to get into the Tudor era. As you guys know from Revelation, I really enjoyed that book. I enjoyed that era, and the same thing goes with this. I will say there were some names in there that I recognized from Revelation, and I'm not sure exactly how far apart those books are in years, you know, in the Tudor era. But there was like names like Seymour, which was in, you know, Revelation, and it's in here too, although it's not the same guy. But I was still kind of just all like, oh, I know that name, and just all excited like a little girl. It is beautifully descriptive, this book, and I really enjoyed it. There are many twists and turns to the story that you're kind of like thrown aback by. And, you know, again, like with Revelation, this is a very kind of almost religious book. You start to see how the king or queen influences religion and that they can, in fact, go around and say, you're not allowed to be this religion anymore. I really did not like Kate or Catherine as characters. To me, they seem to be like those overly zealous girly girls who are just mainly concerned about marriage and babies. I did not like that. I did not at all. Kate, in the end, however, when she takes her stand, I really love that about her. She's kind of got this fighting bit in her, and I really like that because you need that, especially in this era when you're dealing with a crazy Scottish queen. Although, I will say, the crazy Scottish queen was my favorite. She was ruthless, she was nasty, and she would take shit from no one. The entire time she was queen, you had these guys telling her she had to get married. She had to have an heir to the throne soon, otherwise she was going to be overthrown. And she's like, that's not happening. I'm not getting married. And she's just rocking it and just being all, you know, herself. And I love that about her. All in all, this book was very good. It was, however, not worth the year hunt I had looking for. I probably would never read this again in fear that my head would explode from the many plot lines. But there is also this 
inside of me that's kind of like, if I go back and reread it, there'll be things that I missed, things that I'll see again, and I'll be like, hmm, I see it now. So, uh, we'll see. All in all, though, I would give it about maybe a C plus, if that, maybe a B minus. It wasn't horrible. It was very well written. It was very descriptive. It pulled you into the story. It was just some bits of it that just drawled out that I was like, that doesn't need to be in here. Why is this here? Why do I care? And, you know, just things like that. So this is a, I will give it a C plus. C plus. It's well worth a read. I would highly recommend maybe renting it from the library double the time because it's going to take you a while to read it. It's going to. The next book I have for you guys is Beautiful Lies by Claire Clark. It is the first hardback I've purchased in the UK and I don't know why it's taken me this long to read it, but look at that cover. Oh, look at it. It looks so beautiful. I'm going to read to you guys the back thing now. When other people inquired about her name or her family or remarked upon her unusual accent, she only shrugged and offered the briefest of explanations. Maribel Isabel Contanza de la Flamerda, 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 something French, was such a mouthful that she had always been known as Maribel. That was that, the extent of her history. Even the most persistent questionnaires could not draw her farther. Further, that should be further. That bothers me. So is the fact that there's no commas in the first sentence. Okay, this will be fun. C plus, read it, enjoy it. This is especially good for those of you who are into the Tudor era or kind of have like one of those weird fascinations with the princess in the tower. C plus, read it. Keep tuned for Beautiful Lies by Claire Clark. Like before, I have read this book, so be prepared. Be prepared. Until then, you guys, happy reading.